Well, of course, the Great Western Railway, designed by Brunel, ran all the way between London and Bristol, and it went through Bath. And the line around Bath was one of the most difficult parts of it for Brunel to design and build. So he spent a lot of time in Bath, working on the railway around here, and how he was going to fit it into the landscape. Yes, of course, the big issue, I suppose, and the big problem for him when it came to Bath is you have this wonderful Georgian city, uh, and here's a man trying to plan a route uh, which obviously uh, had to work its way through that Georgian city with, without affecting it too much. Yeah, well, absolutely. He couldn't just build the railway line straight through the middle of Bath and, you know, destroy Queen Square in the process. So he had to fish around the Georgian city. And, of course, the landscape as well, because not only were there all the Georgian buildings, there were the Bath Hills to fit it around. So Brunel spent a lot of time in Bath planning the route of the railway, and he actually planned it from this very site because he stayed in the White Lion Inn, which was built right here. And it wasn't just a hotel, it was Brunel's business base in Bath, so he had office space there. Now the irony is, once the Great Western Railway was up and running, the coaching business, of course, went into a decline. So there was very little business for the White Lion Inn, they made less and less money over the years, they eventually closed down, the inn was demolished, and this gallery was built in its place. Catherine, it put the, the coach service out of business, I suppose, but it also did the same to the Kennet and Avon Canal, didn't it? Well, that's right. I mean, the Kennet and Avon Canal only opened to Bath in 1810. Within 30 years, the railways were open, and a lot of freight was going that way instead. So, yes, the canal didn't actually last as the main means of transport for goods for very long at all. Of course, I suppose that the great advantage of the railway in terms of speed was it opened up places like Bath to people to visit very easily. Yes, absolutely. I mean, initially that wasn't the big idea behind the Great Western Railway, but of course as the 19th century progressed, that was very much the way that things went. The Roman baths weren't discovered until the 1880s, but by then the rail service was very well established, and it meant that when the Great Bath was discovered, people could travel from Bristol, Swindon and other places just for the day to come to Bath to see these discoveries. So I suppose the Great Western Railway was responsible for these wonderful posters that were produced to promote Bath, and you've got a fantastic display of them here. Well, yeah, absolutely. The posters are wonderful. Though, of course, the railway really dates from the 1830s, 1840s. The posters didn't come along until much, much later, because I think in the 19th century, the railway was seen very much as a resource for business. It wasn't really seen as something for day trippers and something frivolous. You know, that's just not the 19th century way of doing things. But, of course, by the 20th century, people had broader horizons. They were getting out and about more. And that's when the posters really took off. The oldest post on display is here behind me, and it's from 1926. But you can see it's quite basic. I mean, it doesn't have a slogan. It just says, Bath. GWR. It's a black and white image. It's quite basic. So this is the beginning of the poster industry. But you can see with this one next door, it's from later. It's more colourful. There's more design to it. And GWR poster design really took off from the 1930s onwards. And the company put a lot of effort, time and resources into creating really good posters that would get people travelling. I, I suppose the star attraction here has to be the, the Francis Frith Paddington Station. Uh, are you pleased to have that uh, uh, amongst your collection here for the exhibition? We are absolutely, absolutely delighted to have Frith's 1862 painting of Paddington Station. It's an absolutely iconic work of Victorian art. Dates from 1862. By then, Paddington Station was open. Lots and lots of people were travelling. And the painting really celebrates this. And in Frith's painting, you can see the whole of Victorian life, you know, rich through to poor. There's children, there's adults, there's animals, there's even a criminal being arrested. So the whole point of Frith's painting was that everything was happening on the railways and all human life was there. Finally, do you have a favourite? Do I have a favourite? No, I can't have a favourite. I love all of it. And I mean, I, I'm very, very pleased to see all of these works of art on display. And I think they're all great. And I hope people come and see the exhibition and enjoy it all as much as I do.